My name is uh, Barry Mizzen. I'm the father of a, a young boy called Jimmy. Jimmy was murdered in May 2008 uh, in the community where we live. I think the story of Jimmy's murder goes back prior to what actually happened. I'm the father of nine children. Uh, Jimmy was our second youngest son, great, great lad. Um, but prior to this, the, these, what, the next son up from Jimmy uh, had had some problems with a local youth. Um, he'd been mugged on a couple of occasions by him, um, a, a young lad with a lot of aggression, a lot of violence in him. Um, the fatal day for us was, was the day after Jimmy's 16th birthday. Jimmy was uh, 16 on a Friday. Uh, we spent some time indoors. We had a three-way cuddle, Jimmy, my wife Margaret and, and myself, just telling Jimmy how much we loved him and uh, how important he was, how proud we were of him. Uh, and that was the last time I saw him. Following day, uh, I went off to work. Jimmy used to work with me. I'm a, a shoe repairer of my own little business. And Jimmy was my Saturday boy. Asked for the day off because it had been his birthday the day before, which I agreed. Uh, Jimmy had spent the morning talking to his mum about doing the lottery. He had now old enough, gone around the corner from where we live uh, with his brother Harry. Uh, gone and bought a lottery ticket and then got into a local baker's. And uh, in the local baker's was this lad, Jake, who had, the one who had been bullying Harry on a couple of occasions. Uh, they wanted to bully Jimmy, wanted to, to stand where Jimmy was standing. Um, swore at Jimmy, told him to get out of the way. Uh, Jimmy said something along the lines of, well, some manners weren't going to miss. Um, Jake, 19 years of age now, a particularly violent, aggressive person, thought he'd been disrespected by Jimmy. And Jimmy got very tall, still a 16-year-old boy, got very tall. And Jake's looked at him and said, think you're a big man, come and stand outside the shop, I'll show you how big you are. And he wanted to fight Jimmy, got outside the shop, uh, offering Jimmy out for a fight. And uh, Jimmy didn't want to know, didn't want to know. Uh, his brother Harry inside the shop with Jimmy got on his phone, rang another brother to come around the shop quick. Um, there's, there's a problem, and Jake's come back in, who are you, who are you on the phone to? I remember you. And now he wants to fight both of them, and uh, neither of them wanted to know. He's taken, Jake's taken his car key out of his pocket, he's jabbed, but jabbed both of them towards their face with a car key. Um, Stemp retaliated, didn't want to know. He's gone to a, a drinks cabinet, picked up a couple of plastic bottles of water, uh, and Harry started banging them both over the head to provoke them into fighting, and now they've retaliated. Together they bundled Jake outside the baker's shop where they were and shut the doors to the shop shut, glass doors, and uh, Jimmy and his brother are keeping these doors shut from the inside with their hands on the glass doors. Jake outside now has, has gone berserk, a witness said at his trial, absolutely lost any control whatsoever. Picked up a, 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 an advertising sign that was outside the shop with a concrete base, smashed glass doors. Glass has all gone back in. And, and Jimmy and his brother have gone, retreated back into the shop, gone behind the counter. Jake has followed him in, threatened with a sign, got within about a metre of Jimmy. I believe he's thrown a sign to Jimmy and, uh, at Jimmy, and Jimmy's put his hands down to protect himself. Jake has then picked up a glass oven-proof dish full of sausages, thick glass, uh, that was behind the counter, and thrown it at Jimmy's head. Thrown it so hard it shattered on Jimmy's chin. A piece of glass went into Jimmy's neck. It's gone through his uh, major arteries in his neck and embed itself in his spine. Jake has then left the shop, run up the road, a witness said he was laughing, I don't, I don't really know. Jimmy's run to the back of the shop, shut himself in a cupboard. The other brothers then turned up to follow the commotion. You know, where's Jimmy? Followed his trail of glass and blood and sausages, gone to the cupboard and tried to get the door open. Jimmy was inside keeping the door shut, so frightened for his attacker to come back for him. And, 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 and Tommy eventually got the door opened, confronted by a very frightened looking Jimmy. Jimmy collapsed in his brother's arms and died. Three, three and a half minutes of absolute madness. It's not a computer game, it's not, uh, it's not a Hollywood story, it's, it's not a book, it, it's factual, it's, it's real life. You know, a young, young, beautiful young lad lost his life through the actions of somebody who had no control whatsoever over his temper. Jake was charged with Jimmy's murder. Um, Ten months after the, the incident, he went to trial at the Central Criminal Court, the Old Bailey in London, and he was found unanimously guilty of Jimmy's murder. Um, if you're found guilty of murder nowadays, it's automatic life sentence. So Jake will always be uh, a convicted murderer. He will always have that sentence with him. Um, you don't necessarily have to spend your whole life in prison, and Jake was given a minimum tariff that he must serve of 14 years. So 19-year-old young man, um, 
at the very earliest to be 33 before he's eligible for parole to come out of prison. Uh, and you don't just walk out. You don't just walk out of prison. You have to apply, apply for parole. If the, the parole board think you've changed, you've accepted some of what you've done, some responsibility, then you can come out. But uh, I think, yeah, let's think about Jake a bit. Uh, that he'll come out and one day he'll come out. Perhaps one day he'll meet a girl. You know, Jake, what did you do when you were younger? And what can he say? I murdered a schoolboy. For us, it wasn't a case of how long somebody got in prison. For us, it was about the truth. And the truth came out of what happened to Jimmy. Uh, and that, for us, was the most important thing. That, that, that lies weren't believed. The truth came out. Our response, uh, myself and my wife, um, didn't feel anger. Not at all. Incredible sadness. Didn't feel anger. Didn't have any uh, need for revenge. I don't... Uh, and I'm, I'm thankful I've never had a sense of wanting to do to Jake what he did to Jimmy. And that's important to me. And myself and my wife had such a sense of empathy for Jake's mum and dad. That if someone knocked on my door, this is what your son's just done, we would be devastated. Wouldn't stop loving our child, we'd be devastated. And assume that's where they were. And for us, it, it was almost as though the, the realisation of what happened to Jimmy, it, it was, you just can't comprehend it. It's such a massive blow. You can't actually comprehend really in your heart what's happened. You know, I, I knew then Jimmy was dead, but I still part of me just couldn't believe it. I was determined from the very beginning of two things. And one was I was not going to be beaten by this. I was not going to let any more damage be done to my family. And secondly, something good had to come from it. Some, something good so in, in memory of my son, but also in memory of the, the, the many, many other young people who are losing their lives that something good must come from it, a change must come from it. And then people say, well, what, what about forgiveness? You know, how can you forgive things like this? And I, I say, it depends what you mean by forgiveness. I think it's important to realise that, for me, forgiveness isn't about excusing behaviour. It's not to say that, hey, it doesn't matter, move on. People do things to us in life. All of us suffer trauma of one kind or another. You know, if you haven't already, you will do. You know, for, for, from the very youngest, that trauma will come into your lives and how do you deal with this? You know, do we let it carry on and, and destroy us? Or do we somehow deal with it when people do things to us, against us, say things, do things? How do we deal with that? And we don't excuse the behaviour, but we say it will not do any more damage. It mustn't do any more damage. Forgiveness can be seen as a selfish act, if you like. That I do not want revenge, I don't want to get my own back. After the trial of Jimmy's killer, after Jake's trial, he was found guilty. And there was a lot of speculation about what's going to happen to him. You know, where's he going to spend the next 15, 20 years of his life? And I reflected on this a lot. And for me, why did we not have that much interest in his life in the first 20 years? I can't help feeling that if we'd been more focused on the first 20 years of Jake's life, rather than where he was going to spend the next 20, then my son could well still be alive.